explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about stable diffusion, how to install that on a Linux Ubuntu machine using docker and installing extensions, plugins and so on. So let's jump over to my screen here. So here we see the stable diffusion GUI and I can even run Dream Booth here. I can create a model, I can uh, do a performance wizard setup and I get some information and set up for my particular graphics card. And then in this concept view, I can put in the path to the specific output folder and where my images is. And I can also set up a prompt here for my uh, instance and for my uh, photos and so on and I'm tried to run train on this and I've done it multiple times I've run it manually I've worked around it and I haven't gotten it to work and the reason is because I saw a, a guide from uh, uh, cross computing and they did it without any problems at all and the reason is because they have 24 gigabytes of the uh, video RAM and I don't I only have 12 and this is for doing this kind of training on a person you actually need that much graphics memory and I don't think that is something that you have in a normal setup in uh, just your gaming computer so either you buy that uh, specific particular card for that particular task or you buy the service from uh, somewhere online. And I have done that, but I want to show you how to use this tooling and also how to set it up in Docker. So let's go with a text prompt here. And here we see some cats on a skateboard. And let's say that we want to see a pig on a roller coaster. And we can generate some images there. So generating images doesn't really require that much GPU power because it's much easier to generate photos than to uh, running. Running the inference is easier than running the training. So uh, this is a pretty funny thing that you can play around with and create a bunch of photos on generic stuff. But of course you want to run it on your own face or something like that and then you need to have a better trained model. But having it set up like this and installing extensions wasn't really that r straightforward. There were a bunch of different things that I needed to do. So let's switch over to my running console here. So here we have it up and running. And what I'm actually running is a pretty long command this command for docker so there is this stable diffusion web ue um, docker image already prepared by kestel31 and um, so they have created a bunch of these kind of pre-packaged uh, docker containers and what you want you want to have the stable diffusion web gui uh, git repository checked out on your machine as well because there is a bunch of folders there that you need you also need to download one of the stable diffusion models and put that in your model directory there is a guide on the stable diffusion github page how to get that model and download it that wasn't really that hard um, then when we run this in here you want to give it a name I want to run it in iteratively with uh, remove it afterwards. I want to set a port. So this is the port that is inside the docker container and then I put 8090 as my outside port that I can reach from the host. And then I want the NVIDIA driver capabilities, all of them. And I want to run the current user and the current group. And then down here we have the GPU, all, all GPUs. I want to run in a privilege mode and the actual docker container. And then I have a bunch of these folders that I have um, linked inside of the Docker container. So first off, we have my home directory, GitHub Stable Diffusion. There is where I've checked out my uh, host. And then I want to link the model Stable Diffusion for the actual 
stable diffusion model into home user stable diffusion web UI that's inside of the docking container. And other than that, the path is the same. Uh, then I wanted to link all the outputs, all the styles, extensions, model extensions, model VAE, and then the config JSON. And the one important part here is that you want to use one of these directories, I use the output directory, to put your images in, or else you need to map another uh, directory for your images. Because in the Docker container, you need to have the actual inputs that you want to run. Uh, and that was something that tripped me up when I wanted to start this training, that I put the images on my drive and then put in a URL in inside of the uh, Dreambooth here. So in the Dreambooth, you can set on the concept and a URI here. And this is home user stable diffusion web UI outputs simple. That's my path to the inside the Docker container, a map directory with my images. Uh, and then you want to map up the UE config JSON back. And this file actually needs to be exist in, uh, in your system uh, for some reason. And you, it needs to be a file or else it will create a directory and it will not start. And then you want this web UI user SH to be mapped on your local drive as well. And that is one thing I want to edit as well in order to get this to run. So there is a bunch of things here that needs to be set up in order to get this to run. And in this web UI user, I added some extra command line arguments. First off, I want to listen. If I don't put in listen, then it will not start up or it, I will not be able to reach it outside of the Docker container because the Docker container starts it up on 127.0.0.1 which means that it's only available to the local host of that Docker container. It's not published outside of the Docker container. With the listen command, it will be mapped to 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 and then the port number, which means that it's reachable on the host as well. So I can actually map the port and get into the container. So when I'm done that, it works to start stable diffusion in a Docker container. No problem. Okay. Yes. So that listen command actually disables the installation of extensions, which is really bad. So after that, you need an extra flag for enable insecure extension access. And that's why I had to also map my uh, extensions directory so I can actually keep the extensions after you install them. And when you have this set up, you are able to install extensions. And because you have mapped the, the directory, when you install the extensions, you need to restart your Docker container and you need to have it mapped so it will launch and install it after you restart. So that's a bunch of different things in order to get the Docker container running. Another part of this is that you want to have your GPU available in your Docker container. And that's another problematic part. And there is actually a guide for this in the NVIDIA installation guide here, where you can install that on different systems. And if we scroll down here to Ubuntu, we can see that we can install this uh, NVIDIA Container Toolkit Base uh, on another system, but we can't actually just run that. We need even more. So down here, there is also this list here where you can set up your distribution and then the actual toolkit as a source of your, uh, of your apt uh, directory. So you get the GPG key, and you also add this extra source. In my case, I couldn't run this command because I'm running on a non-stable Ubuntu version. So I had to put in a stable version here instead on the distribution line here. So I just put in the, neck, the older version, one older. So instead of uh, 2304, I said 2204 
and uh, it could install that because the uh, packages for the absolute latest is not here. And then after that, when you have installed everything, you need to run this NVIDIA CTK in order to generate uh, the files that should be running. And that is available in another repository here called NVIDIA Docker. And NVIDIA Docker, it talks about this NVIDIA CTK runtime configure and it pretty much just creates this daemon json file in your docker directory and it just says run this nvidia container toolkit but in order to for it to get it to work you need also to apt get the nvidia docker 2 uh, package and install that in your system so when you have done that you can run the test command it's also available here nvidia SMI. So let's see if you have the docker command here. So here we have this command here where we run docker run rm. Let's see if we can do this a little bit bigger. So docker run rm uh, runtime nvidia gpus all nvidia cuda and you get that specific package and then you run nvidia SMI on that line there and when you run that command inside the docker container, you should get this output. If you get any failures here, then the drivers are not installed correctly. So it took me a while in order to get NVIDIA Docker as a package, NVIDIA Container, um, or it was, what was it called? NVIDIA Container Toolkit, get that installed. But when you had both of those installed, it actually just worked and I had CUDA available and could be running inside of a Docker container. That was very exciting. And after that, starting up the uh, stable diffusion was no problem as long as you get this uh, listen command and uh, listen command up and running. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. It is a little bit uh, complicated to get it up and running but I think the best way to run stable diffusion is in a docker container because the most of the power that you need is not on the CPU end so having a little bit of an extra layer there doesn't really matter because you want you want what you want is actually the GPU power and you get full power on your GPU inside a docker container as well but in this case, I couldn't really train it because my GPU only, only have uh, 12 gigabytes of um, video memory, which I think is a lot for being a graphics card, but not a lot to do for making these kind of training models. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. I will leave a bunch of, I will leave a link in the de description with all the different uh, materials that you need in order to get this up and running. And if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.